good morning everyone as usual we are always running tight of time so i won't be taking much of time in presentation we'll just leave more time for discussion so this is my case 35 year old manual laborer female chronic back pain from one year right leg pain since one month and severe since three days and she developed cauda equina when she presented to us uh, since eight hours she had cauda equina so now this case is open for discussion I put up the all the images you see a huge disc uh, central as well as inferior migration and uh, I would invite what should be done open endoscopy interlaminar so we had a interesting case yesterday where surgically we were trying to remove the uh, disc uh, through the axilla of the nerve root. So this is a similar disc. The only addition is she has a cauda equina. Yeah, anyone can. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, look, uh, I can always talk, I, I think. I think the aim is to get in and get in on time and the aim is to decompress the nerve root. So there are many ways to go to Rome. Select the way which you are the most comfortable with. Select the thing which is going to damage the patient the least and select the one which you can do the earliest. I mean, like I said, you have got to go to Rome. You have got to decompress that cauda equina. Now, yeah. whether you do it so-called open, so-called MIS, so-called endoscopic, that's your choice. So, uh, but do the one which you do the best. Don't do the one which somebody yeah. you are trying to sell to somebody. Yeah. So I think uh, what we will do is, uh, I was just telling Professor Rajshekharan that we should get a discussion out on many aspects. One is of course that the discussants will do that first, but one point I want to raise even before anybody discusses is the fact that this is the cauda equina, eight hours. I just want to know from the panelists one thing, do you want to operate in the middle of the night? You want to wait another eight hours, like in the morning if you want to do, or just your thoughts, please. We'll start from Ajay. Um, see, whenever you have a cauda equina, the fact that matters is the time duration. If they're coming within the first 12 to 24 hours, I wouldn't mind operating in the middle of the night. If it's me, I would prefer that somebody addresses that as early as possible. If it's more than 24 hours, then probably looking at a time frame when you are easier for you to do, I mean, not too late, but as early as possible. But if it's within 24 hours, especially within 12 hours, my option would be to go in immediately and do it as early as possible. So anybody for endoscopic? Yeah, sure. uh, this is one, you have said eight hours, there's no doubt I will go in at an uncomfortable yeah, There's time. no doubt that we are operating anyone for endoscopic interlaminar For me it is, I'm most comfortable with tube, uh, microendo and removal. Like whether a wide, you don't require wide. We can do everything degree. wide inside, what we want to do wide as an open, through that, I'm comfortable with that, so. Okay. And uh, since she is a 35 year old manual laborer, single disc affection, quite tall disc, chronic low back pain, anywhere for fusion? No, primary no, fusion? no, 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 no. It, it looks like there is lysis at L5 along with the, uh, the, so better to get dynamic x-ray and then decide whether to go for fusion or not. So, <clears throat> so I think there are many young, young people there here also. So we should uh, divide in two segments of discussion. Like uh, what needs to be done and how we are going to do it. And as uh, Samir rightly said, how you're going to do it takes a back seat as to what needs to be done and when you're going to do it. Young person, eight hours, and we know it's not like a person who has come with a cauda equina of one month duration, and then there is no need to operate in the middle of the night. Immediate onset, eight hours, there is ample proof to know that their decompression must be done as soon as possible. It doesn't really, really matter whether you're going to do a fenestration or a microdiscectomy or a tube or an endoscopy, if you're good at it. Hmm. So I don't think we should discuss too much on what you will do. You should do what you are comfortable with, what you can do without hurting the nerve roots more, not jeopardizing the nerve roots 
or the Kota Equin Amor. You should do it as early as possible in a technique that you are most comfortable with and which is most safe for the patient. Any advantage of all these techniques, one over the other, is very short-lived. After a month, it doesn't really matter what you have done. And I don't think we should also fuse unnecessarily. Yeah. So, so Ashutosh, can you just run through the case? Sorry, what next? No. Uh, I did this open is the only one. Any role of steroids, panelist? Any role of steroids with the corda equina? So, even in all the NASA study, everything, it's all for the cord. For uh, nerve root and corda equina, there is no proof that you need to give a steroid. Okay. Steroids, sometimes people give if they have radiculitis, some battered nerve root syndrome, or some painful paresthesias after your surgery. But I don't think steroids are discussed for nerve recovery in a corda equina syndrome. So one of the things that you need to concentrate on looking at MRI, especially if you're going to do it in the night, is can you see whether it is the, the disc prolapse, the extrusion, has it gone upwards or downwards? So it is mentally clear where you're going to do. Second thing is whether it's a shoulder or an axilla. If you can get this information by reading the MRI, it helps you to prepare your mind and do what exactly you need to do. If it is one of those very easy discs, you open, you do a little laminectomy, and the disc is staring at you, you pop out, everything is easy. Like yesterday's case where it was under the nerve root, yesterday there was a case where it was under the nerve root, it was stuck. And a very experienced surgeon like Dr. Bonnard found it. He's, I mean, it's not difficult, it is a slow going. So in that situation, in the middle of the night, you will start hunting for micro instruments, micro set, it'll make you more restless. So the thing is, Right. I'm not saying you overread the MRI, but read the MRI adequately so you are prepared for the challenge. Um, yeah, you can never overread the MRI. I fully agree with Rajkumar. One uh, usual tip is if you have a disc which is migrating down, 90% of the times you will find it in the axilla. And if it is a disc which is migrating up, 90% of the time it is on the shoulder. So if there is a large inferior migrated disc, you will invariably find it is in the axilla. So you need to be mentally prepared for it. Any take on panelists uh, about the steroids which uh, Raja sir mentioned radiculitis because of such severe compression? Local steroids, depomedrol or uh, oral injectable steroids? If there's a lot of root handling, then I may give local steroid. Can I call Devamidron not available? Sir, sir just one, one only one question. thing I would like to add. Sir, sorry. One another question regarding the steroids, sir. Sir, the compression, the pain and the motor loss, everything happens not due to the compression alone, but also a chemical part is there. So whether uh, IV solimidrol like thing will help in at least relieving that uh, some chemical damage which is happening to the root or the... Just, just a question. No evidence, number one, and second also, the chemical neuritis is a cause for inflammatory pain, nerve root tension signs, and uh, SLR. But corda equina doesn't occur due to chemical inflammation. Corda equina is a result of direct compression. The only one thing I would like to add is the fact that it's the better understanding that has come in the last decade is probably look for annular ossification because it sometimes determines what you are going to do, whether your approach, whether you are something we are learning new, like you are doing an endoscope and you find that it's a whole posterior analysis is ossified along with the significant compression, then your approach might change. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next case. Yeah. Dr. I Kushari just did a, a wide uh, decompression and uh, the huge disc fragment was found in the axilla of the root. So. Thank you, Ashutosh. 